chapter six. We're still in unit two and still in chapter six, but we're going to start on the muscles of the arm. So our first muscle is called the coracobrachialis, and this is going to be a smaller muscle compared to the rest of these that's found in the axillary region. So it's a muscle found in the armpit. The bicep brachii, you've probably heard of this before your class. We've kind of talked about it with some bones and everything, but the bicep brachii has two heads to it. It has a long head and a short head. And so an alliteration to help you remember which one is which long head is lateral. So it's one on the outside, whereas short head would be medial. So when you take a look at the muscle itself, it's going to look opposite. It's going to look like the short head is longer than the long head. It's going to get a little confusing until you can understand the difference at first. But if you remember long head, lateral, LL, it'll always keep you in check. And the reason it's going to appear that way is if we cut the biceps brachii on its insertion and both origins and we laid it out on the table, the long head is longer because it has a long tendon compared to the short head. So it would have a longer appearance, but the bellies themselves may not look like the long head has a longer muscle belly. But if you take into consideration the tendon, which will go through that intertubicular groove all the way up and around to the supraglenoid tubercle, then this is the longer head. But again, long head lateral will always keep you in check. Just deep to both of these heads is a muscle called the brachialis, so it's underneath it. We'll see what that looks like here in a moment. And then we have a muscle called brachioradialis. Now, this is a muscle you want to star, and we'll talk more about it when we get to the pictures, but this is a really important muscle to help you figure out kind of what you're looking at with the arm. So as we take a look here, we're going to zoom in up here. So we're in the axillary region. So our first muscle right here is that coracobrachialis right here. So what this muscle is telling you in its name is its origin and insertion. So it is originating on the coracoid process of the scapula, hence the coraco part. And it's going to insert in the upper two thirds of the shaft of the humerus. So the humerus is the bone of the brachium, hence its name brachialis. Now what it's doing is it's causing flexion of the humerus. So it's going to cause the humerus to come out of the screen right now and also adduction of the humerus, bringing it closer together. The nerve that's going to innervate coracobrachialis right here is going to be the musculocutaneous nerve, which we'll talk about more when we get into the brachial plexus. We also have our biceps brachii right here. And so you can see it separates out into two heads. But if you take a look, this one right here on the inside looks longer than this one. But we remember our alliteration, long head lateral. So we know this is the long head, whereas the short head is the one on the inside. Now, the, the two heads are going to have two different origins. So the long head right here is going to originate on the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. And so that's where this long tendon is originating as it comes through that intertubicular groove right there. The short head is also going to originate at the coracoid process here, same as that coracobrachialis. Both of these heads will insert to the same place though, and they're going to insert right here on the radial tuberosity of the radius. And both of them are going to have the same actions. They're just going to cause flexion of the forearm and also supination. The nerve is going to innervate both of these heads is the musculocutaneous nerve, same as coracobrachialis. Now, just deep to it right here, you can see some of it as it's coming down to its insertion, but it's also found just underneath here, all of this, the brachialis muscle. And the brachialis is going to originate on the shaft of the humerus, so right about here. And then it's going to insert onto the coronoid process of the ulna. What the brachialis muscle does is because it only crosses this elbow joint, it only has one action here, that's just going to be flexion of the forearm. And it's going to be innervated by a couple of nerves. Musculocutaneous will innervate parts of it. The median nerve and the radial nerves will also innervate different parts of brachialis. As so we come down here, brachioradialis is this muscle right here. So it's on the lateral side. Now, one thing I want to point out here, we're going to draw a dashed line to separate our brachium from our antebrachium, just like so. And with the brachioradialis, why it's so important to use as a landmark is it's the only muscle that's going to have a big, large portion in the brachial region and then cross over into the antebrachium right there. 